Hey guys, this is Kim Offord, art collector, realtor, and author. And today I want to talk about um, making sure that you catalog your art. So the more art that I purchased, the more I realized that I needed to keep track of what I had. It was an investment. I had to look at it as an investment and treat it as treat my art pieces as investment. So um, I started cataloging and keeping track of everything. And I'm going to show you today how I do that so that you can start doing that with your art and your art collection. All right, so what I'm gonna show you right now is how to develop your own art catalog, just simply using an Excel spreadsheet. You can go on Google and you can um, Google art catalog spreadsheet and you'll see several examples. Um, that's what I did as well as talking to um, other art collectors that I know um, to determine what I need to put on uh, or what I need to include in my catalog and so here's what i came up with this is what i use this is the blank version of what i use and i'm going to go through each field just to explain it so that you can create your own so the first thing that i always want to make sure that i have um, in my uh, art catalog is the name of the piece not what i call it but what does the artist call it what did the artist name the piece so when you buy your art it may already um you may there may be a description already of the piece that tells you what the artist named the piece um, sometimes the artist will if it's on a uh, canvas if you turn the canvas around sometimes the artist will write the name of the piece on the back of the canvas or if you have a, a certificate of authenticity it may be on there um, what the name of the piece is. If you buy a piece directly from the artist, you can ask them. Um, but if you don't know the name or you don't have access to the name, you know, I would suggest, you know, maybe putting a descriptive, you know, putting some descriptive words here in this uh, section. The next column is the size. So you want to have the size of the piece so if it's an 8 by 10 it's a 36 by 20 or whatever the size of the piece is um, you want to have that put that here in this column now there is a difference between the size of the piece and the size of the piece with a frame because the frame will obviously increase the size of the piece so you can actually have another column here and insert a column that says you know size with frame size without frame i personally have the sizes without the frame but that's something that i may go back and change later on the next you want to have the name of the artist who actually created the piece and then you want to have the year that it was created so sometimes you know artists will actually under their signature on the piece they'll put the the uh, year that they created the piece um if not you can also find that on the certificate of authenticity. The other thing that you may be able to do is if the artist has a, a book, um, you know, a book of their collection, you can do some research by looking in their book of collection to see if maybe that piece is in there to see what year that it was done. So there are different ways that you can kind of research that. The next thing, next column that you want to make sure that you have is the purchase date. So when did you purchase the piece? So maybe you purchased it, you know, at a um, art gallery or an art showing. You want to put that date in there that you purchased that piece. Then the next thing is your purchase price. How much did you pay for the piece? Again, you know, um, this is where you want to definitely keep your receipts um, because I, you know, I have pieces of art that I bought years ago. I can't remember how much I paid for them. And, you know, maybe I didn't have a certificate of authenticity. Maybe I didn't have a receipt or I can't locate a receipt at this time. Um, but you want to make sure that as you buy pieces, you're updating your catalog so that you can keep track of how much you paid uh, for your pieces. The purchase location. So um, for your purchase location, did you buy it at an art gallery? Um, did you buy it directly from the artist? 
Uh, did you buy it online? Now, the other thing that I put here in purchase location is if I commission an artist to do a piece. So that means that I went directly to the artist and I had a specific request and they created that piece for me. I would put that here, that it was a commissioned piece because that that's important. That is important information to know. The next on the air is the current location. So what do I mean by that? I mean, where is the piece hanging? You know, is it in your living room at your home? Is it, you know, in your dining room? So you want to put your, now I personally put my address and the room that it's um, hanging in. And I do that, you know, for insurance purposes. You know, if something happens in my house where, you know, maybe there's, um, you know, some water damage or fire or whatever, you know, and maybe just one room in the house was affected, you know, I have it documented what pieces were in that room so that I could come back and kind of, you know, value what was lo what the loss was. Um, and that's also for theft um, and for, you know, situations where my uh, art collection is being passed down and they want to identify, you know, those pieces. They know where it is, which one it is, you know, and, um, you know, so they have the location. The other thing, too, is that if you want to, if your piece, if your piece is in a uh, storage if your piece is in storage, you want to also put that here. So you would have, you know, the storage location of where it is. And when I say storage, I don't mean like in your basement because you would just put basement. But if it's at like a storage facility, then you would put that storage facility here. Maybe what that locker number is or, you know, what that storage space number is. So you have that information because what if something happens to the storage facility? You want to make sure that you're able to make the right claims. This is where you are you're going to describe the piece. So again, your certificate of authenticity, uh, you know, will tell you, you know, maybe it's acrylic on canvas or, you know, maybe it's a pencil piece, you know, or, um, you know, maybe it's a poster um, or it's a signed poster or maybe it's a lithograph. So you want to make sure that you describe the piece. Um, you can reach out to the artist and they could tell you what it is, um, but you want to make sure that you can describe it as best you can uh, for your catalog. Next is the condition. Um, you know, is it in good condition? Was there some damage to it? You know, is it frayed on the edges? Um, so you want to make sure you have your condition here and then whether or not it is framed. Um, and again, this kind of goes back to that whole size thing. You can put here, yes, it's framed. No, it's not framed, you know, and call it a day. All right. And then your notes. Um, I just have a section here. That's just for me where I put in some notes, um, about the piece. Um, and, um, yeah, you know, whatever, you know, information you think might be a little bit more helpful, you know, in determining uh, your value or keeping track of the piece, you can put those notes here. So again, this is the art catalog. Why do we have an art catalog? You want to catalog your art for several reasons, insurance purposes, um, legacy purposes in terms of passing art down uh, to others appraisals down the line. This is really helpful for if you have an art appraisal, you start accumulating enough art where you need to have an appraisal. Being organized will help the appraiser to do their job. Um, you want to have a catalog also just, you know, for your own purposes, if you decide to sell some of your art down the line. Now you can keep track of everything, how much you paid for it, and then you know, maybe down the line, you can add a field that says an appraisal and appraised value. Maybe you have another, you know, field for appraised value and you could put that in as well. And this is what I use for my art catalog. So again, simple Excel spreadsheet, put in the fields that you, you know, want to, and then keep track, make sure that every time you buy a piece, you update the sheet or, you know, you'll be lost. All right. So hopefully that helped 
uh, you. And um, now you can go and um, catalog your art. In addition to the Excel spreadsheet that I have, I also have an art catalog binder and in it I keep all of my certificates of authenticity so basically those are all of your certificates that come with your art pieces if you don't get a certificate you can always just put your receipt in the binder and it just proves what you paid for the piece when you bought it um, what medium it was it gives you some of that information um, you can also go back and put pictures take a picture of the pieces and put it in there and keep it for safekeeping